In the old days of DaVinci Resolve, to create a speed point, you will have to come to the edit page and for the selected clip, you're going to right click and then in the menu, select read time controls. Now let's click on the drop down. You can now add a speed point. Just like that, you can now create variable speeds uh, within different parts of the same clip. But all that has changed in DaVinci Resolve 19. In 19, you can actually come to the cut page and then just move your playhead over the part of the clip where you want to add the speed point and then right click and then in the menu, select add speed point. So here we go. We have now added a speed point just like that. This works essentially as if you were coming to the speed point section in the inspector panel and then adding a keyframe. All right, guys, so now let's move this playhead over a few frames and then we're going to add another speed point. So now you can have variable speeds within three different parts of the same clip. So to make the actual change, we're going to come to the change speed setting under speed change. We can scroll left and right. This will allow you to either slow it down or speed it up depending on the effect that you are going for. Another way of making the change is to click on the percentage here and then in the menu, select on any one of these preset numbers. Uh, now you can also uh, select uh, set. Uh, this will then give you a pop-up window. Now you can punch in any number that you want here. Now, one thing you guys are probably noticing is that as we are changing the speed, the clips to the right of our main clip here are getting pushed around as a result. The reason this is happening is because we have ripple uh, turned on. So if we were to turn that off, now notice what happens when we start to change the speed. Uh, you will see that uh, it's going to leave a gap in between, or it's also possible that uh, you know some of the content will get overridden as a result. So this is just something to keep in mind. There's no right or wrong. It just depends on what works best for you. Another call out I would like to make is that you cannot use the speed point to change the speed. Uh, so I know this is confusing because on the edit page, you can actually easily do so by dragging the speed point left and right uh, to either increase or decrease the speed. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that on the cut page. On the cut page, when you do this, this is just going to tell the system which part of this clip you want to change the speed for. Now, another thing I want to mention here is the importance of the position of the playhead. So ideally for this part of the clip that we want to make changes to, I, we want to put the or place the playhead right on top of the first speed point. You can also position the, the playhead somewhere in this part of the clip as well. But notice what happens when we start to uh, increase the speed here. At some point, you will see that this second speed point is going to land right underneath the playhead. And when that happens, this is going to actually affect this other part of the, uh, of the clip. So this is not what we want. And it is very important that uh, you understand how the position of the playhead is going to affect the change that you are going to make. All right, guys, lastly, I just want to mention that when you click on the speed point, this is going to review a small menu here up top, which will allow you to change the interpolation between, uh, you know, different parts of this clip. So by default, it is linear, but you can also change it to smooth if you want. Uh, you can also click on that trash button that will delete the speed point. So as you can see, uh, this will, if you don't want the speed point anymore, you can easily delete it like this. All right, guys, so this is pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you next time.